But in the same way, we have this tendency to get confused about what God calls small, we call big, like our character. That's big to God. It's small to some of us. We'll compromise our character to get clout. God says, I'll make your name great. You don't have to take any of your clothes off on TikTok. Who am I preaching to like this? And in the same way that we can confuse what God calls small with what we call big and what we call big and God calls small, the prophet Isaiah says we have this problem. And I want to give you this verse. It's very powerful in Isaiah 5, verse 20. Let's call on the prophet. He said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. What's he talking about here? I think you know exactly what he's talking about. I think you've experienced it probably even in church where people can sometimes even use religion as a cover-up for prejudice. That's what Isaiah is talking about when you call evil good and good evil. Christians can be some of the most closed-minded, hateful people, and I love us. I have no choice. I'm stuck with us. I decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, but I didn't know all these fools were going to be doing it with me. <laughs> and see, it's in my own heart. No, 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 no. Before you start shouting about other people, I'm really talking about you because sometimes you use your relationship with God as an excuse to be closed minded and not get another perspective. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Is this stance awkward for you? It's awkward for me. <laughs> you know, I'm standing on the word of God. No, you're not. You're stuck in tradition. And people will use the message of the Bible as an excuse to be mean. Like, I know it's a corny joke. I didn't tell you this one yet. This woman went to church. She hadn't been in a long time. She didn't have any nice clothes, so she was wearing clothes that was inappropriate to go to church. So when she got there, the preacher talked to her afterwards. He was like, Hey, you need to wear something different when you come to church next week. That isn't appropriate. So, you know, you just might want to put something different on. Ask God what he wants you to wear next week. She came back next week wearing the exact same thing. She said, uh, Preacher said, She, uh, she obviously didn't hear me the first time. He met her at the door. He said, I thought I told you before you come back this week, ask God what you should wear to church. I want you to go home. Before you come back next week, ask what you wear to church. She comes back in the same thing. That's all she had. She had a rough life. She, 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 didn't have, she didn't know what to wear to church. She hadn't been to church in a long time. She came back the third week wearing the same stuff. The preacher was mad this time because the deacons were mad at him, so he was mad at the lady. It was a whole chain of condemnation that was going on in this little fictitious church. And he looked at her and said, I thought I told you to ask God what to wear before you came back to this church. She said, I did. He said, then what did God say? He said, she said, uh, he said he didn't know what I should wear to this church because he'd never been here. <laughs> Have I ever told you that one? That's a classic. That's a classic. <laughs> How many of you knew the punchline before I said it? And you're waiting for me to get to the good part, right? Tell them, Pastor. Tell them. Tell them we are not being, you know. Ah, oh, it's so amazing, church people. So, what we do is we substitute judgment and call it holiness. We call evil good. And evil is only what others are doing. <laughs> the decibel levels are going down <laughs> as I make it more personal. <laughs> Come on, get back to the good part. This is the good part. This is the good part of a sermon where it challenges your assumptions that are keeping you from accessing the blessing of God. Let me tell you another thing. The Pharisees in the Bible, they were the religious ruling party of Jesus' day, and they would come up to him to test him. So one time they came up to him, and the, the man didn't have good motives. He, he said, Jesus, he, he called him, good teacher, good teacher. 
sucking up, you know. But really, he was trying to catch Jesus in a contradiction. So it's a bad idea. But he didn't know yet that Jesus was the Word made flesh, dwell among us. He didn't know that. So he said, Good teacher. Jesus said, Why do you call me good? Only one is good. That's God. That verse spoke to me this week. See, I don't know if I can call myself a good man. I want to be. I try to be. I aspire to be. Holly says that I am. Um, I got some dark parts, though. All I can see is your halo right now. I can't tell if you're sympathetic and you're judging me. Every good man has dark parts. Every, there is a part of every person that is really dark. Different things bring it out of us in different times. Some people's dark is more socially acceptable than others. Um, and, and if the people around you haven't seen your dark part, they haven't got close enough. Yeah. Even Joseph, who is held up rightly as a hero, kind of an example of how to deal with life's disappointments, setbacks, and let's be honest, man, he went through rape charges. He went through false imprisonment because of those charges. He went with being forgotten by the people that he helped, like all the things that we deal with just times a hundred. <laughs> we deal with little versions of these overlooks and these offenses. Well, he dealt with them you know, on the grandest, most epic scale. And he was able to say something so powerful. God intended it for good. And if you only read that, and I think this is why that you don't like the sermons about Joseph, because in our effort to just skip to that and to make it all good, you know, these, these little things, it's all good. Uh, Romans 8.28, it's all good. Romans 8.28 doesn't say it's all good. Do you remember when you were working on that sermon? Tim Ferriss was working on a sermon one time. We are in a meeting, and he goes, I want to preach a sermon at the Rock Hill campus called It's All Good. Romans 8.28, all things work together for good. I'm like, Timmy, I love you. You can't preach that. That's not what Paul said. He didn't say all things are good. You got people out there who have been molested. You want to preach it's all good? You've got people out there who can't pay their bills. You want to preach it's all good? And I wasn't mad at him. We were just studying the text together. This is how I show love. I get, it. I get in there. Yeah. yeah, this is how I show love. I said, it's, it's not all good. You, if you want to preach that passage, you can preach it's going to be good. And this is what I want to preach to you about today. I want to preach to you about how to get to the good part. But I want to warn you, you can't get to the good part if you're not willing to go through the dark part. There is a dark part in every person. Even Joseph, when confronted by his brothers, was tempted. You hear me? This great hero was tempted to make them pay. And nobody probably put that part in the sermons that Holly heard about Joseph, where Joseph was tricking them and putting a cup in the bag and hiding the cup in the bag and trying to accuse. He still couldn't decide what he wanted to do. Like you right now, you're trying to decide, how do I respond to this? How do I respond to something that, that wasn't good that God let in my life? It wasn't good how my dad died. It wasn't good how your dad walked out. That wasn't good. So we can't preach it's all good. Because before Joseph could get, this is what blew my mind, to the good part where he could say, I will provide for your family. You see how selfless that sounds? How responsible? How mature? I'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. It's all good. But before he could get to the good, he had to go through the dark. And so do you. And so do I. So do I. 
I have to realize that my first reaction is not always coming from my realist self. I am teaching better than they are shouting. Now keep going. I'll move you down to the front row. So people will say this. They'll, they'll just go off, right? They'll just go off, cuss people out, flip people off, turn stuff over, wreck their life, all this stuff, and say, I'm just keeping it real. No, that's just your reaction. That's just you letting the dark part run the show. <laughs> But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That verse is about Jesus, and he's in me too. But in order to get to that part, you know the part of you that's wise and kind and good and yeah, and I don't have to say anything back, and I'm focused, I'm good. The good part, sometimes to get to that good part, you got to keep your mouth shut through the dark part. We don't know what to do with the dark part. <laughs> so we never get to the good part. So I say, get to the good part. You'll never get to the good part if you don't learn how to deal with the dark part. So I guess they're right. You have to make it through a few seasons before it gets good. I guess they're right. You got to get through a few seasons. You got to get through some confusion. You got to get through some things. You got you to put it in perspective. After all, by the time Joseph said this verse, and I promise you, so many of you are new to church, and I want you to know you will hear this verse preached again. It is so popular. You will hear this verse preached out of context, like Joseph just said it when he woke up one morning. Well, you went for evil, God went for good. Without the setup, that punchline is empty. It has been years since Joseph's brothers came back. He's had years to look back on it. He's had time to reflect on what it is that God was doing. And our problem is sometimes we just want to spoon feed people these sugar coated answers. There's a reason for everything. That's not always your job to remind somebody of that. You know, I went off on somebody one time. There's a reason. Well, tell me what it is. Since you're God, what is it? Joseph said, I'm not in the place of God, but yet he acted like him because he saw what was good through what was dark. <laughs> Isn't that what God did in Genesis? <laughs> I never realized. That Genesis 50 20 was just the continuation of Genesis 1 4. Light was the first thing. You know, the seven days of creation. God made the, the light, and then he made the atmosphere or the firmament. And I'd quote all seven, but we don't have time. <laughs> and I'm scared I'll get them out of order. <laughs> but there's all this stuff, you know, this is really good in the dry ground and the plants and then the sun. And he made the light before he made the sun, which I can't figure out other than the fact that he is light. But all of it, you know, the fifth day, the birds of the air and the fish in the sea, and then the land animals on the sixth day. Look, I got them all. I got them all. I got them all right. Somebody give me that. Everybody say, good job, Pastor. Good job. You want a cookie, you want an A plus, you want a star on your chart. But all of that becomes more powerful when you realize that in Genesis 1-4, look at this. God saw that it was good. He doesn't need light to see he is light, so he saw it was good while he was still doing it. Most important thing I've learned, like in creating. A sermon, a song, really even in building a family and trying to create a great relationship, is that there's always a dark part. Just like you have flesh and I have flesh and you have memories and I have memories and you have temptations and tendencies and I do too. <sighs> every process, not just every person, but every process has a dark part. I can't think of a single song that I ever wrote that I didn't at one point during the song feel like. Uh, 
Ichabod, the glory has departed. I'll never write another song. What am I trying to do? And at these moments, I don't know how to explain this to you. I know you know what I'm talking about. I'll be sitting there going, uh, Tom Petty wouldn't have liked this song. Tom Petty is dead. Tom Petty never even heard of Elevation Worship while he was alive. I got Tom Petty looking over my shoulder going, eh, not so sure. Where did Tom Petty come from in this? But like, that's a part of the process is like pushing through that judgment. Hey, when y'all do that to for, for you, it's not Tom Petty over your shoulder. Okay, it's your mom. Yeah. Yeah. There's a part when you go to do something for God, write a song, take a step, make an act of service, change a habit. I don't care what it is. There is a part of every process that's dark, and it can come right. I mean, right before. For the best part. And if you let it die in the dark, you'll never get to the. Like, I promise you, it's not just the caffeine in me. It's like God sent me out here to say to somebody, you've got to get through this dark part. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.